Hi students. Now in this video, we are try to learn about the transportation in plants. So in the previous video, we know that the plants are categorized under the heterotrophs and they prepare their own food, right? With help of the photosynthesis. Now we also will learn about that the plants require the raw materials that is carbon dioxide, water, and minerals. So we know the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere is absorbed by the stomata, right? And then we require water and minerals which we get from the soil, right? So transportation involves in the plants involves the two processes. One is transportation of carbon dioxide and the one is the transportation of water and minerals into the body, right? After the photosynthesis takes place, the food is prepared in the leaf. Then that food is used as an energy and transport to the every part of the body of the plant. So we, as we understand here, there is an involvement of the transportation system in plants also, right? The transportation of carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide requires. So we uh, want, we try to uh, transport the water, carbon dioxide to the plant. So for the photosynthesis, waters and minerals are involved. So transportation of water and minerals are very important. Without the these carbon dioxide, water and minerals, the photosynthesis has not taken place. So this involves the transportation of these three substances. One is the uh, carbon dioxide, one is water and the minerals involved. Okay. And that after photosynthesis, we observe that the food is prepared and that food also be transported to the every parts of the body. Right. This is the transportation system in the plants, right? So I provide the points here. So first point, the plant transportation involves in the transport of water and the food, right? The transport of water plus minerals and the food is prepared after the photosynthesis. So all these are involvement of the transportation, right? So we know that the water present in the soil and the minerals present in the soil and they are transport to reach to the leaf. When these are reached to the leaf, then only photosynthesis takes place. So from the root to the leaf is a transportation system is there, right? Then again second point, uh, as we have plants prepare food with the help of photosynthesis by using the raw materials, carbon dioxide, atmospheric carbon dioxide and water plus minerals from the soil. So as we know, the plant for photosynthesis requires the many raw materials that is carbon dioxide, water and the minerals and these all are present in the, the carbon dioxide present in the atmosphere that are transported by the uh, somata and the water and the minerals which are present in the soil and that can be transported by the one important part of the from the roots so that involves the transportation right next the soil is the nearest source of minerals like nitrogen phosphorus and many materials many minerals right so we know that uh, for the trans source right for the plant, the nearest source of, the easiest source of, because the plants require dissolved form, minerals, so it is dissolved in the water and the main and the nearest source of the minerals, right, phosphorus and nitrogen for the plants is nothing but water, the soil. Next point, the absorption of the water plus minerals, right, as we know it now, the water and the minerals are present in the soil. And that can be absorbed by the plants and reach that minerals and water to the leaf for the photosynthesis. So absorption of that soil and the minerals, that is nitrogen, phosphorus, is done by the very important part, that is what the roots, right? And there are two types of roots here. One is fibrous root and one is a tap root. We are studying the sixth standard, right? That roots are involved in the there is function of root is there. First, the roots are give the grip for the upholding of the tree. Right, that is one. But another very important working function you have. That is very important function of the roots are absorption of the water and the minerals. Because the soil is the nearest source, and when the soil, sorry, when the root absorb the water and the minerals from the soil, they transport to the leaf through the water, through the stem, with help of stem, through the with help of vessels. So that is roots are are very nearest source of nearest. Uh, Contact with the soil, that is roots are directly contact with the soil and from the soil they absorb water and minerals. So that is what root. Next, if see, there are two types of plants that we categorize. Sometimes you observe small plants and some you observe the big trees, right? So the small tree, nothing but water, the root and the distance between leaf are very small, right? 
the distance between root and the roots and the leaf is very small then we call that that as a small plants so in the small plants the diffusion process is easily taken place right higher concentration to the lower concentration in the soil the concentration of minerals and water is more and inside the plant it is less so at what happened from soil to uh, soil from soil to root and root to the plant the absorption taken place higher concentration to the lower concentration that is in the small plants so in the small plants the transportation system is done by the simple one diffusion process that is diffusion process right one point to remember here in the small plants where the distance between roots and the leaf is very short very less in that in such condition the simply transportation system is involves the diffusion process higher concentration to the lower concentration when you come across the very big trees for example coconut tree we observe that the root and the the distance between root and the leaf is very large very very large right it is double building it is size it is larger than our building size right observe very very large and we observe many plants trees banyan trees right mango tree coconut tree and other fruits tree observe the distance between root and the the leaves are very very large in that condition if the distance between root and leaf is very large a simple diffusion process is not be sufficient for it right it is be very late for that a proper transportation systems are involved a proper vessels are involved as we studied in the ninth standard xylem tissue and the phloem tissue right it is involves it is present in the large plant and the proper system is required right so in the large plant the diffusion property is not is sufficient in that condition in such a condition proper transport system is required that we are studying in the next part that is the proper system which is present in large plants when the distance between root and leaf is very large so in such plant we use the very uh, important transportation system and that is nothing but transportation system of water and the transport system of uh, food right so water involves in the xylem tissue and where the vessels and trachea are present right vessels present so that is what in the large plants so we study that one and then transportation of food that is involves the tissue phloem tissue right phloem tissue that is the vessels the sieve tubes the companion cells are present so that is proper systems are there when when the distance between the root and the uh, leaf is very large one point when the plant is very large that is the another point so in that condition when the tree size is very really, very really large now the right when tree size is very very large the distance between roots and leaf is very very large and that condition diffusion process is not sufficient not match in that condition we use the proper system and that systems are two types one is what transport of water through the xylem tissue and one is transport of food from the phloem tissue so now let's try to learn these two transportation system in plant students okay so please note down all these points first initial okay students now take the first transportation in plants is that is transport of water right so as i discussed in the earlier that there is involvement of the xylem tissue for the transportation of water so now come to this points which are right on the board and to understand the what actually taken place in the plants right as we know in the plants the water is push upward opposite to the gravity how it is possible as we know that due to gravity the water should be attracted toward the toward the soil but as we know that in the plants the that is upward movement of the water upward movement of the minerals which is upward movement which opposite to the gravity means what there is a some force are there which are greater than the gravity that is what called upward force so how that upward force is created in the plants that also studied here and that upward force help in the movement of the water right so come to one by one there are two upward forces are there so study one by one right so as we know that the transportation of water involved in the transportation of not only water plus minerals right which is done by the root part right which is near source of near source of water minerals is root soil and then from the soil the root is contact so root absorb the uh, nothing but water minerals and water so here the xylem tissue right the xylem tissue is xylem tissue which is composed of so many the vessels and trachea right so a xylem tissue is composed of two tissue cells two cells one is vessel and one is a trachea 
right? These are combined together from the xylem tissue. Okay, and these vessels and tracheas of the xylem are interconnected with each other. They are combined with each other, and the, the roots are contact with the root. So roots are contact the stem, and the stem is contact branches, and the branches are contact with the leaf. So there is a connection between root to the leaf. There is no there is no gap between them. It's a continuously one branch, one chain, and one connection is there. And that connection is done by the tracheas and the vessels of the xylem tissue. So here. The xylem tissue, which is composed of vessels and tracheas of the roots, stem and stem, uh, roots, stem and leaf. So it is leaf. It is a leaf interconnected to form a continuous system of water connecting channel. Right? There is no gap from root to the leaf. Either connection is there, continuous connection is there, which help in the that connection is help in the that connection which is made by the xylem tissue. The xylem tissue tissue make the one connection, make the bridge with help of vessels and tracheas, and that bridge is continuous. There is no break between them. Continuous bridge which connect the root to the stem and stem to the root root uh, leaf, and that continuous chain, continuous channel is involved the transportation of uh, water. Okay, which is to all transportation of water and reach all parts of the plant. Okay, that reach all parts of the plant. So that is connection. And at the root, the shells in the contact with the soil actively taken up the ions. We know that we take the whole part of the plant. Leaf also require water. Stem also require water, and branch also require water. But the main part, which take the water to all other parts, is done by the roots. Why? Because of the roots are directly contact with the soil. So roots are the part through which so root having. Some uh, cells and that cells are contact the soil and that taken the ions that is water, minerals, nitrogen, phosphorus and other minerals that is taken by the roots taken up by the roots. This create a difference in the concentration of uh, the concentration of ions between the roots and the soil. See, this is a very important, right? Soil are having water and the minerals and root is. Not having that soil and the mineral, there is difference between them, right? We know that it is the soil and there is the root. So we know that if the water is drawn from here, uh, here this is the my hand. This is nothing but uh, soil. This is the root. So this root absorb the soil and mean ions from the that root soil. So means upward movement is there. So they absorb means they move like that upward movement, opposite to gravity. Means that so if, if you want to move opposite to gravity, we require some energy, right? We require some up, upward force, and that upward force is created by the diffusion process, right? See here how happened. The soil having rich source of the soil is the rich source of minerals and water, and the roots so, the roots of the cells having not that. Okay, so there is concentration difference. High concentration of water in the root. Uh, In the soil and in the water is a in the root is a less concentration. So there is concentration difference between the soil and the roots, and that create a one force. That create a one force. So what happens? See uh, that roots and stem, their water therefore move upward from the soil, eliminate this difference. Okay, this first moment that is the moment of the water from upward force, right? That is upward force is created by the first one. That is this one, right? How water is flow opposite to the gravity? How water flow upward moment? What should create upward force, right? Which upward force is taken the water towards upward, right? So that is done by the this one. This is one that creates an difference between concentration of the ions between soil and the root. When there is concentration difference soil and the root. Automatic, what happened in the soil? High concentration of water, but in the root, less concentration. This created difference, and automatically there is upward force is created, and that upward force involves in the moment of uh, the steady moment of the water in the xylem, create a column of water that steadily upward push with upward push. Right? So how this uh, upward push is possible? Upward. They push to upward as possible. This is due to the concentration difference of the ions between roots and the soil, and this concentration difference create an upward force. That is number one, students. After that, write down this, write down this one.
okay after that another one is there another one process is there which also create a upward force one is create upward force how created this upward force is created by the concentration difference between the roots and the soil and this concentration difference is created upward force that is first condition right so second condition write out this one okay write this one so the second condition which create an upward force that is what transpiration that is what transpiration transpiration what is mean by transpiration transpiration nothing but the loss of the axis of water rise okay when the water absorbed by the plant right so water present in the plant side so this is a make the less concentration of the water inside the plant then the loss of water taken place right so that is important transpiration uh, is a process it is a process of process of loss of water loss of the loss of water loss of excess of water loss of excess of water from aerial parts of the plant aerial parts of the plant plants parts of plants this is called this is called transpiration this is called transpiration and that the help in the that helps in the helps in the creation of upward upward uh, push uh, upward force upward Force, upward force for the movement of the water. There are two uh, methods which are create an upward force. One upward force is done by the concentration difference between of the ions between roots and soil. That is one point. Okay. So again, I repeated the column, the creating a column of water which steadily upward push. This is done by the two process. One is uh, due to the ions concentration difference between the root and the soil therefore which move the roots from the soil to eliminate this difference that is first case upward moment and the second upward moment is due to the transpiration when the water is lost from the bo body of the water body of the plant what happened automatically the plant require water they suck water again so that is created force right so again second one the transpiration is a process of a loss of excess of water from the aerial parts of the body is called transpiration and this help in the create upward force one is due to the difference concentration and one is due to the transpiration process and these two methods are useful for the making upward force and then upward force is help in the conduction of water so student all these points are you have to write in the transportation of water right first para and then end to the this point so you get the full marks so this is what the, the transportation of water in the uh, water in the plants so this is one point we have studied here now the another very important point about that so what is the importance of transportation that is also given the examination one is defined transportation i'm sorry transpiration so transpiration you have right this definition then they also ask about what is the importance of a transpiration so now uh, after writing this we come to the very important point before going to the full transportation we have to discuss some points about the importance of a transpiration student one important is uh, create upward force one then another two importance are there that we also studied here okay so please note uh, note on these all definition and these are points okay right now students take the last point about the transportation of plants so in the uh, this earlier video we have to study about there is an uh, transpiration process so what are the importance of the transpiration process here very important for the examination for the two marks it is very important for two marks so what is the importance of transpiration so as we know the for number one the transpiration helps in the absorption and upward movement of the water and the minerals right upward moment pushing moment is created that is created by the loss of water that is absorption of uh, that is transpiration transpiration so transpiration involves in the upward moment and that upward moment help in the absorption so that is very important for first one 
it is helping the absorption and upward movement of the water and minerals second one helps the temperate regulate regulation right the maintenance of the temperature of the plant that is also important in the uh, transpiration process due to condensed loss of the water is make the regulation of the temperature then during the day when the stomata open we know about the open and closed stomata when stomata open means uh, the water flow inside okay so stomata open the water transpiration pool becomes the major driving force in the movement of the water in the xylem during the during the day time right when stomata is open and that condition when the stomata is open loss of water is maximum and the loss of water is maximum means what happened the suction force is more so in the day time the movement of the water is more as compared to the night because in night the stomata close that is what the slow process of loss of transpiration less means the less absorption if the transpiration is more means the more so in the day time the stomata are open and that open stomata loss more amount of water and the excess loss of water create an more force that is what the more transpiration drawing force in the uh, day time so that is what importance of importance of transpiration in the uh, in the importance of transpiration so one is create upward movement one is maintenance create and the temperature regulation and one is the make uh, the open stomata make a major uh, transportation of water during day time so that is what very important three points about the transportation transpiration importance okay so here we complete the xylem uh, that is the transportation of water through xylem and we learn about how the xylem create and network and transfer the water in all parts of the body how there are two force are upward force are there to make the water move upward one is due to the concentration difference between the soil and the root that create an upward movement of the ions and second one is transpiration loss of water from the stomata also create an upward movement and these two upward movements are help in the movement of the water and they are help in the photosynthesis process right so that is what the movement of the water and the minerals in the plant students now come to the very important other point that is movement of the food that is we call it transpiration the movement of the food in the plants with help of the tissue that is a xylem so please note down this point and come to the another very important point that is transpiration of food now take the another important point that is transportation of food and the other substances so after water we come to the food so here as we earlier discuss about that food transportation and in the ninth class also we studied that food transportation plants involve in the vascular tissue that is water phloem right so here phloem tissue is for, is a food conducting tissue help in the transport of soluble products of photosynthesis is called translocation that is very important what is translocation transpiration is a water related and the translocation is a food related right? okay the soluble product transportation is nothing but what translocation the transport of food and other substances is nothing but what translocation in the plants and it occurs in the part called vascular tissue called phloem and that is done by the vascular tissue called phloem okay one point the second point the translocation of the food and other substances are takes place in the sieve tubes that is what the made up of sieve tubes and companion shell adjacent companion shells is composed of so phloem tissue is composed of uh, sieve tubes and the uh, companion shells so both together are make uh, the upward movement and the lower movement of the food right we know that uh, the plants there is only upward movement in the plant there is not not lower movement in the plant the water will move only upward movement due to the concentration difference and due to the transpiration but when phloem we come to the phloem the phloem is both direction phloem the food transport downward direction also and the food transport the upward direction also because of the food preparing the leaves and the all parts are required a uh, root also required food and all parts are required food means there is an upward movement of the food also and lower movement of the food also takes place okay there is two dash of food is two types so in the phloem the translocation of the food and the other substances are takes place in the sieve tubes with help of the adjacent uh, uh, adjacent companion shells upward and downward direction both directions now upward directions of water is done by the two energy one is concentration difference one is transpiration now here food also require energy for the movement right food prepare and food transportation from all parts of the body right to all parts of the body also require energy and that the transportation of food from every part of the 
body is required energy and that energy they get by the ATP in the form of ATP adenosine triphosphate okay so energy is used for the transportation of food in the upward direction and the lower directions right the food is prepared now food is transported to every part of the body upward and lower that transportation required the energy need energy and that energy the plant is used by using the ATP currency adenosine triphosphate so by using ATP the water can move sorry the food can move upward and downward direction that is very important which energy is used for the upward and lower movement of the food means it is ATP in the in the tra water transpiration it is a concentration difference and transpiration create an upward force right there process but in here upward and downward force created by this ATP right the upward moment is with help of ATP and the lower moment with help of the ATP so this is what about the transportation of food that is called translocation so students in this video we have studied about the transportation in plants one is the transportation of water and the one is transportation of food hope you understand these two processes are very important as point of examination transportation of water for two months uh, definition of transpiration definition one mars and uh, what is importance of transpiration two mars and the uh, transpiration of uh, food and other substances for two mars and the defined translocation is for uh, uh, what it is for one mars definition okay so please again watch this video and hope you understand all two concepts one is xylem and one is phloem right so please note down these all points and recall it one time it is very important as part of examinations okay so thank you for watching this video